Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the special meeting of the Liquor Control Commission for Monday, October 7th. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Thank you. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner here. Here. Commissioner Vogo. Here. Commissioner Lang. Here. Commissioner Kruger. Present. Commissioner Brady. Here. Commissioner Hine. Here. Chairperson Argyris. Here. Approval of the minutes for the special meeting of September 3rd, 2013. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Brady. Second. Second by Commissioner Lang. Roll call. Commissioner here. Yes. Commissioner Fogo? Yes. Commissioner Lang? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Brady? Yes. Commissioner Hine? Yes. Chairperson Argyris? Yes. 5A New Business, Madam Clerk. In consideration of an A Class L liquor license, the Segredal Corporation, 385 Gilman Avenue, the event will take place October 16, 2013. Thank you. Manager Fondelis. Uh, thank you. The item as presented in your packet, uh, we ask for only one uh, condition, and that is upon final review and approval by me once we receive all of the uh, paperwork associated with the item. Thank you. Questions? So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Lang, second by Commissioner Vogel. Roll call. Commissioner here? Yes. Commissioner Vogel? Yes. Commissioner Lang? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Brady? Yes. Commissioner Hine? Yes. Chairperson Argyris? Yes. 5B? 5B, in consideration of a Class A liquor license, W.H. Spears LLC, DBA Spears Bourbon Burgers and Beer, 701 to 749 North Milwaukee Avenue, Suite C103. Thank you. Andrew Schwandelis. Thank you. This item is on the agenda for the board this evening for further consideration. This item is the standard uh, liquor license request that comes with the uh, normal conditions, one being satisfactory criminal background check results for all responsible parties, passage of an ordinance granting a special use and associated site plan for the establishment, and passage of an ordinance by the Board of Trustees authorizing the creation of a new Class A liquor license. Thank you. Is Mr. Romeo here? You want to step up to the podium? Thanks. Questions from the Commission? No. Commissioner Lang, nothing. Commissioner Vogel? No. Commissioner here. Uh, Hang? Here? No. <laughs> Kruger? Nope. Commissioner Brady? So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Brady, second by Commissioner Hine. Roll call. Commissioner here? Yes. Commissioner Vogel? Yes. Commissioner Lang? Yes. Commissioner Kruger? Yes. Commissioner Brady? Yes. Commissioner Hine? Yes. Chairperson Argyris? Yes. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. 5C. In consideration of a Class B1 liquor license, Stella's at Lexington Comma, Commons, LLC, DBA, Stella's Place, 1081 Lake Cook Road. Thank you. Manager Fondelis. Thank you. Again, another item that is on the agenda for the regular board meeting this evening, uh, and it comes with two conditions. Uh, one, passage of an ordinance granting a special use and associated site plan, and the second being passage of an ordinance by the Board of Trustees authorizing the creation of a new Class A liquor license. Questions? Commissioner Brady. This will be the third one of these we're going to be working on. When are we going to see one of them? Mr. Leff, just come on up. Well, Mr. Leff is approaching. I can tell you that as far as the village knows, the holdup is on the state licensing side, uh, and that's what we're waiting for is final approval from the state. Yes, that is true. Uh, we finally have heard back from the Illinois Gaming Board, not on these specific locations, but they're starting to process uh, our other applications. So uh, we anticipate getting approval for these soon. Uh, and we have, I believe, either submitted plans or actually, we, I'm sorry, we have started construction on our site in uh, uh, West here on Dundee. And we are, uh, we have submitted plans on wheeling and we anticipate starting construction on that within the next, I'd say, six weeks. Uh, and hopefully, ideally, both should be open sometime in the first quarter of next year. Anybody else? Yes, Manager Svondilis. Yes. Um, I just want to be clear, this is a Class B1 liquor license, not A? Uh, you're correct, I'm sorry. You're correct. Any other questions? Entertain a motion. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Lang. 
Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Kruger. Roll call. Commissioner here. No. Commissioner Vogel. No. Commissioner Lang. Yes. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Brady. Yes. Commissioner Hine. No. Chairperson Arduris. Yes. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Motion by Commissioner here. Second by. Second. Second by Commissioner Lang. Roll call. Commissioner here. Yes. Commissioner Vogel. Yes. Commissioner Lang. Yes. Commissioner Kruger. Yes. Commissioner Brady. Yes. Commissioner Hine. Yes. Chairperson Arduris. Yes. <clears throat> the regular meeting of the board and myself for the Village of Wheeling for October 7, 2013 is now called to order. Roll call, please. Trustee here. Present. Trustee Vogel. Here. Trustee Lang. Here. Trustee Kruger. Present. Trustee Brady. Here. Trustee Hine. Here. Prisoner Juris. Here. Approval of the minutes for September 3rd, 2013. So moved. Motion by Trustee Vogel. Second. Second by Trustee Lang. Roll call, please. Trustee here. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. Trustee Arjuris. Yes. I mean, President Arjuris. Thank you. President. <laughs> Changes of the agenda? Anything? None this evening. Okay, thank you. We have three proclamations this evening. Madam Clerk, start with the first one. Okay. Uh, the 170th anniversary of Benai Ne Brith. 2013 marks the 170th anniversary of Benai Brith International. The organization was founded on the Lower East Side of New York to improve the lives of new German Jewish immigrants to America. Benai Brith is the oldest service organization founded in the United States and has an unparalleled record of aiding humanity in communities throughout the United States and more than 50 other nations. The American Red Cross, which was founded 38 years later, was co-founded by a Benai Brith birth member. Benai Brith has provided over $100 million in cash, metal equipment, and supplies to victims of disasters worldwide since 1868. Benai Brith is a strong and vocal advocate for the promotion of the State of Israel and has had an active presence in Israel since 1888. Benai Brith has had an active presence at the United Nations since its founding and is the only Jewish non-governmental organization with full-time representation at the United Nations in New York and its agencies in Europe and Latin America. Benai Brith is America's largest Jewish sponsor of federally funded housing for seniors with limited income, provides safe, comfortable, and affordable housing for seniors without regard for race, religion, and ethnicity, and has an international network of senior living facilities. Benai Brith is widely acclaimed as a forceful advocate for senior citizens with a special emphasis on protecting Social Security and Medicare <coughs> and in supporting health care reform for all. Benai Brith has a 100-year record of commitment to cultural diversity, tolerance, and understanding as exemplified by the Diverse Minds Youth Writing Challenge through which high school students write and illustrate books which Bernard Brith then publishes for elementary school children, teaching them the values of tolerance and diversity. Benai Brith members in local communities, including Willing, provide countless hours of service to local projects to better the communities in which they live. Dean Arjuris, President of the Village of Willing, do hereby proclaim Congratulations to the members of Benai Brith International on the occasion of their organization's 170th anniversary and wish them continued success and happiness in the future. Congratulations. I just want to uh, express our appreciation to the village of Wheeling, and particularly Martin Say, who uh, coordinated this. Thanks. Thanks, Dean. Thank Congratulations. Okay. Next okay. proclamation. Domestic Violence Awareness Month, October 2013. Violence against women and children continues to be a prevalent problem in the Northwest suburbs. The problem of domestic violence affects all Illinois citizens being not confined to any group of people, but crossing <coughs> all economic, gender, racial, and social barriers exemplified by social indifferences. The crime of domestic violence violates the privacy, dignity, security, and humanity of individuals through systematic physical, emotional, sex, sexual, psychological, and economic control and or abuse. The impact of domestic violence is wide-ranging, directly affecting families, children, and societies as a whole. 
Domestic violence affects one in four families and imposes a consequential cost on society and businesses, resulting in health care related expenses of $4 billion and nearly $700 million in annual lost wages, sick time, and reduced productivity. 30,848 orders of protection were written in Cook County, Illinois in 2012. 140, 140, 346 offenses were reported to Illinois police in 2012. Local educational information and resources are available at www.endallabuse.org. It is fitting to set aside a special time to bring this issue to the attention of the residents of the Village of Wheeling so we can all become better informed and involved in local programs to end the cycle of violence. Dean Argyris, President of the Village of Wheeling, does hereby proclaim the month of October 2013 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in the Village of Wheeling and encourage our residents to join with the Northwest Suburban Alliance on Domestic Violence, Law Enforcement, Social Services Organizations, and concerned citizens across the country to help raise the public awareness of domestic violence issues. We just, um, on behalf of the Northwest Suburban Alliance on Domestic Violence, we want to thank the Village of Wheeling for recognizing this. Um, the Suburban Alliance is made up of a group of nonprofit organizations in the area, as well as police departments, legislatures, and community members. So thank you. Thank you, Diane. Our last proclamation. National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, October 2013. A woman receives a diagnosis of breast cancer every two minutes, making this disease the most frequently diagnosed cancer among women in the U.S., other than skin cancers. In 2013 alone, more than 230,000 women and over 2,000 men will be diagnosed with breast cancer, and tens of thousands will die from it. Through research and advocacy, significant advances have been made in the fight against breast cancer, including an increase from 74% to 98% in five-year survival rates for localized breast cancer. The 2.5 million breast cancer survivors living in the U.S. today are a testament to courage as well as to the importance of promoting awareness about breast cancer, providing information, funding research, following recommended screening guidelines, and offering treatment to those who are affected. Death rates from breast cancer have been declining, and this change is believed to be the result of earlier detection, detection and improved treatment. Throughout the month of October, women are encouraged to make a renewed commitment to following recommended screening guidelines and to make a mammogram appointment. Dean Argyris, President of the Village of Wheeling, does hereby proclaim October 2013 as National Breast Cancer Awareness Month in the Village of Wheeling and stands in solidarity with those battling breast cancer and those at risk for breast cancer. Thank you. I just uh, want to say thanks to the board and uh, our staff for wearing something pink to uh, recognize National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. There is probably nobody in this room doesn't have, know somebody that's gone through such a horrific disease and uh, and for those who haven't or somebody who has survived we're, we're very thankful that they they're still here today but thank you to the board thank you to staff for uh, for their symbolic gesture okay. citizens concerns and comments Members of the general public may address the board with concerns or comments regarding relevant issues. The persons submitting a petition, concern, or other comments shall be allotted five minutes to present their points and should state their name and address into the record. Skip Bieber. Good evening. Skip Bieber, 480 Pleasant Run, Wheeling. Also chair of the Board of Health. And I'm here tonight to talk about our upcoming open house, which will be on August, I'm sorry, October 19th. It'll be the third Saturday this month. It is our annual, excuse me, it's our annual health fair and community open house. This year we will be having flu shots as well as pneumonia vaccines. Uh, Northwest Community Hospital will be providing cholesterol tests for $15 for the first 50 people who show up. Um, after that, it will be $25. There will also be glucose testing at no charge. And this is all 
will be provided at the health fair. We will also be having chiropractors, dental screening, blood pressure checks, bone density, balance posture checking, body fat percentages, spinal stress, as well as chair massages. We will also be having our annual wheeling coat closet, which will be providing winter coats and accessories for wheeling families. This year it is made possible with a generous donation from the Knights of Columbus. Thank you. And then also for community services, we will be having many of our village of wheeling resources as well as local communities will be in the area such as Pace Bus, the state of Illinois will be there with their iCash program as well as social services. And then also please mark your calendar for November 13th for our next blood drive. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, Commissioner Beaver? Yes. Time and location. Time, I'm sorry, 9 a.m. till noon, Wheeling Park District uh, Recreational Center. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Julie Stein. Good evening. Hi. My name is Julie Stein. I live at 1110 Scanlon Drive. I am here to speak on my concerns about you approving Stella's place in Lexington Commons shopping mall. First of all, um, I am, I not only am a resident that lives approximately 75 feet away from the proposed establishment, but I'm also on the board of directors of the Lexington Commons Association. And we have discussed this at length at our board meetings, and we stand firm against this proposal. Uh, we are a residential community. We just happen to have a shopping center at the tail end of our community. We have homes surrounding that shopping area on two different sides. We are concerned about the traffic problems that this would create. There's already um, terrible traffic jams there in the mornings and with Starbucks coffee going in there, this is just gonna exacerbate the whole, the whole problem. Um, I am also concerned about the noise that would be coming from this location. Um, I'm afraid that people would be gathering outside and causing a disturbance to the residents that live right nearby. As I mentioned, we're, we're a residential community, and I don't, I strongly believe that this is not something that is going to enhance our community. Uh, we have kinder care there, child care center. We have a um, tutoring facility there now. We, it's just, this is just not something that I think would be a good fit for our community. You've already approved two other locations in Wheeling, one of which is maybe a mile away from us. I just think this is overkill already. So I am requesting from the directors that they do not approve this. Um, I have spoken, like I said, the association has taken a stand against this. And I have talked to a lot of the residents in the community. We have 564 homeowners in, that, in our community. And we vote. So just remember that. Um, we would appreciate you not approving this. Thank you. Sharon Nagelberg. Okay, this also concerns Stella's. I live directly in back of the uh, place where it's going to be. There is so much traffic going in and out of there. Recently, in the last week, there's been two terrible accidents right on the corner going into our community. So by adding more stress and adding more traffic coming in, I just think it would be worse. I mean, there's so many kids in the neighborhood. I've lived there since the beginning for over 30 years. And um, when the White Hen was there, there was no problem. There was no liquor or anything. It was just a store getting things like that. But by adding this to our community, I just don't think it's right. 
um, and also the drinking and the noise at night. I mean, we keep our windows open or something like that. I mean, it comes right toward us. Or even with the smoking, if they allow smoking out, you know, outside in that little corridor by the alley there, we're directly there too. So I just think that this is just a bad situation. And like uh, Julie said, I mean, there's going to be one less than a mile by our house. That's more <coughs> situated as more a larger shopping center area with no houses in the direct vicinity. So that's what I believe in. Thank you. Michael Nicholas. Good evening. Uh, my name is Michael Nicholas. I live at uh, 1168 in Middlebury Lane, also in the Lexington Commons area. Uh, thank you, uh, trustees and uh, President Argyris, for letting me speak tonight. I'm speaking again on the, uh, the Stella's docket 2013-18A uh, and 2013-18B. Uh, as I understand, there's uh, two issues. One is about the amount of parking. Uh, prior to this, the present proposal, there was a a V pantry before that it was a 7-eleven before that was a white hen the nature of those there's people are in and out for just a few minutes to pick something up they're not parking there for several minutes the amount of parking in that area there's only like eight spaces and half of those are handicapped so I don't know how they're gonna uh, fit all the number of cars there if they're planning on having 40 or so people there for sitting at tables uh, as far as um, the liquor license, my understanding is from the, the state uh, regulations is that if you now allow liquor, then you also have to allow gambling. Uh, a small cafe wouldn't be so bad, but if then you allow in gambling and liquor, that kind of changes the whole nature. This is, as uh, Julie had, had said, this is a residential area. Uh, Julie and their, their, their places are literally like only 75 feet away. It's backing up directly behind the fence. Um, so I would, um, it, and I forgot to introduce, I'm, I'm also on the board of uh, uh, the directors for Lexington Commons, and we discussed this at our board meeting. Uh, unfortunately, we couldn't have anybody attend the planning commission. Several of our residents actually did come and speak on their own, uh, several uh, very much against this idea. Uh, and... Uh, the board actually sent in a, uh, a recommendation to, uh, I believe it was Mr. Jennings, that we were, as a board, were taking a position against this. Um, but I'm speaking tonight on behalf of my own that uh, the nature of this place would change. Uh, it's not just a, uh, a shopping center getting milk and, and eggs or something. To have a, something where they're going to have gambling and, and uh, drinking, as they've said, we've had accidents and so on. It's just uh, we have a concern about that. And, I'd uh, ask you to seriously consider uh, recommending against this. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Rosen. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for the time offered to me. Uh, there's two things I want to talk to. The first one I talked to is a Wheeling Rotarian to let you be known that on the 24th of this month, we're going to be having our annual well, charitable event, which is our only charitable event to try to raise funds so that we can use those funds for the benefit of Wheeling as well as things that go on, such as polio around the world. So anybody that can make this event, it's $25 just for the dinner or $100 a raffle ticket. Each raffle ticket, you could win as much as $5,000, as well as there's other little prizes that go along if you've been to this thing before. So again, anybody that's interested, October 24th, it's going to be over at uh, Chevy Chase, starting at 6.30. Dinner will be starting at 7. So with that, uh, you could either contact me or any of the other Rotarians that are from Wheeling. So thank you for that. Second message I have is a little different. This one I speak to you totally as a, just as a Wheeling resident. And I, again, thank you for the time for this. But this is a, an issue that we've talked about before, many years ago, regarding the tips that you're going to be discussing later tonight. And I had some questions and a few maybe kind of answers to my questions, leading questions that I wanted to raise before you get to make that vote. Uh, and so I'm going to read off. It's a lot easier for me to read this off than to be specifically just coming from the, uh, just out without reading it. So I've got questions that regard the Ordinance 1 under Section 8 to be discussed and perhaps voted upon tonight that reads, and I may quote, has to do with terminating the designation of a Wheeling Southeast Industrial Lane Tax 
uh, increment financing redevelopment project area as created by the ordinance uh, number 4353. And so it's regarding that specific number one under, under E. The questions that I have raised is one, has the village of Wheeling hired or will they hire an outside firm to reevaluate the assessed values of the property in what is now the Southeast Industrial TIF in hopes to bring down the current stated property values? So that's question one. If so, and if successful in doing so, how will this new lesser assessed value property affect the amount of property tax revenues that other local taxing bodies, for instance, School District 21 and 214, will receive? Will it lower the amount of property tax revenues that they can collect? So if so, if this does lower their amount of money that they can collect because of this, how will, this, uh, how will these various taxing bodies react in order to cover the loss of tax revenue in their budgets next year, two years from now, and in subsequent years thereafter? Will they have to cut services to our children, perhaps fire teachers or increase class sizes? All kinds of other things you could possibly think about. Now, or other taxing bodies might or could maybe find some other ways to raise funds uh, the, for these losses through other means of our property tax system? And if so, then who would suffer from the consequences of a lower assessed based property values, this or any existing TIF? The property taxpayers living in Wheeling or the businesses who reside in Wheeling? So in other words, any unforeseen mistake that had happened in the past because of the timing of this TIF seems to have been made with the best intentions just that the timing wasn't absolutely very well in that regarding the Southeast TIF. So I ask again, who should pay for that harmless mistake? School districts, the residents of Wheeling, or the businesses who reside in Wheeling, or the village of Wheeling who made that mistake? Now, if these questions or any of these assumptions that I've made seem foolish, and they may indeed, because I'm only going to be here until 7.30. I've got somewhere else I have to go in. Something that I had planned well before I know this was going to come on. But if not, I ask you tonight to vote on this resolution, uh, not to vote on this resolution, I should say, nor follow uh, following one that regards the town center TIF until you have thoroughly thought through and have answered all these questions for all the parties concerned. And with this, uh, Dean, if you don't mind, I can give you a few copies of what I just said, if that sure. makes it easier. We're going to discuss it when it comes Okay, up and then the also I have attached to the back of there a uh, thing that came out of uh, one of our local newspapers about what happened to Rolling Meadows with the short life of their TIF, and that they just kind of closed the TIF, and that was it. So that might be a possibility for something to consider. So let me okay. get Thanks, minutes. Rich. If you have to leave, you can watch the broadcast. I mean, if it's behind your time. Okay, thanks. Anybody else? That's it. Thank you. Staff reports? Mr. Melanthophy? Thank you, President Argyris. I just wanted to announce to the board, uh, we spoke about it last uh, at the last board meeting, that the economic development staff has uh, completed the new and updated Welcome to Wheeling brochure. Uh, it should come up on the screen in just a moment. But uh, we, the, the purpose of the brochure is twofold. Um, we use it first uh, for our economic development issue, uh, initiatives and our business attraction efforts as well as for um, resident attraction and resident retention. Um, what we try to do on the cover is to convey the uh, landmark images of Wheeling and um, its local assets. As you can see, Chicago Executive Airport, um, our modern high quality retail facilities with uh, Fresh Market and the upscale public amenities, uh, which is Friendship Park. Um, the first pages, uh, if you could advance the slide, basically details Wheeling's uh, incorporation and its uh, rich history as the route between Chicago and Milwaukee. And the, uh, there's some nice photos of the old days in uh, Wheeling. And uh, what we try to do is in the next slide is show the evolution of Wheeling and what it looks like today to the prestigious north suburb. Uh, with a world-class Village Hall, uh, the Weston Hotel and Convention Center, uh, Chevy Chase Golf Course, uh, the bike trails and beautiful uh, streetscape features that we have at uh, Dundee and Milwaukee Avenue. 
Uh, the next slide shows the uh, kind of a glimpse of the superior location in the heart of Chicago's um, north, north uh, suburbs with our excellent transportation infrastructure, um, including uh, Chicago Executive Airport, the metro station, uh, the interstate highways, bus, pace bus service, and our proximity to um, O'Hare International Airport. The, uh, the next slide shows uh, some important information about the quality of life. Um, actually, the next slide, the map kind of, uh, thank you. Uh, the high quality of life in Wheeling and the uh, high standard of living that Wheeling enjoys with a wide variety of housing types and a variety of pipe price points. There are also numerous shopping, dining, entertainment and cultural amenities in Wheeling, including the award-winning Aquatic Center, Chevy Chase Country Club, the Korean Cultural Center of Chicago. And then, um, you know, when you look at learning in Chicago, when, you ever, when, when f people talk about finding a home and raising a family, schools are at the forefront of this uh, discussion and the excellent schools in, in Wheeling are highlighted um, in that, on that page and uh, we want to do um, specifically highlight <coughs> Wheeling High School which is consistently ranked in the top three percent of high schools nationally by US News and World Report. We also are home to National Lewis University which provides graduate level uh, courses in business and education and then uh, when you look at uh, the beautiful open spaces provided to residents at the Wheeling Park District facilities, Cook County Forest Preserves, and we've tried to um, provide you know, photos of that throughout the brochure, um, as well as some of the websites that uh, residents would look to to get more uh, information on those, uh, including the Chamber of Commerce, the Chicago Executive Airport, the um, High School District, um, as well as the village of Wheeling. And then um, as the slide that's up now, you can look, we uh, highlight Wheeling's Restaurant Row and all the tremendous restaurants that are offered in Wheeling. Uh, Bob Chin's in particular is um, honored by Forbes as the nation's highest grossing restaurant. And so we also wanted to highlight some of the major employers. If uh, you could go to the next slide um, about the, uh, the Wheeling's manufacturing base. We have over 14 million square feet of manufacturing space in the village and um, it showcases uh, you know all our manufacturing facilities and our major employers. Uh, we are constantly trying to help our existing manufacturers grow and attract new manufacturers to the community. Um, the next slide speaks to um, Chicago Executive Airport as an international gateway to the world with uh, an international customs office um, and the airport in 2012 uh, the Illinois Department of Transportation named Chicago Executive Airport the reliever airport of the year. Uh, we've got some uh, aerial photographs of the airport and uh, the uh, which is a tremendous asset and uh, we, we like to boast about that uh, with all the uh, the businesses that we are attracting here. Um, the next slide basically talks about our strategic planning efforts and with the Wheeling Town Center and the uh, Heritage Park and uh, redevelopment and uh, development opportunities um, in the village and the partnership <coughs> that the village creates um, with the business community, uh, the Department of Economic Development provides all facets of business attraction, business retention, marketing. We assist businesses with their growth objectives while at, at the same time retaining existing businesses in the community. And the services and the contact information on the following slide provide um, our contact information along with all of the economic development tools in our toolbox. And we are very proud of this uh, new brochure. It'll be uh, on our website. There's copies at the Chamber of Commerce as well as the Village Hall. 
and uh, this is just one other component of our economic development strategy. Thank you, President Argeris. Thank you. Questions from anybody? Excellent job. Excellent. Agreed. Great job. Uh, <clears throat> Director Stavros, do you have a comment to make? Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, President Argeris. Um, we're at the um, annual let's flood wheeling with uh, brochures of warning the residents that they do not have insurance for their water service lines and our residents are receiving a cover letter that looks kind of official with then a, a pamphlet attached to it explaining to the homeowners that they uh, currently do not have insurance coverage for uh, water service line leakage and they say in the brochure that uh, the water service line is the homeowner's responsibility from the uh, property line to the house in most instances and of course this insurance does not cover anything beyond the property line. Well in the village of Wheeling your water service line is yours all the way to the connection to the main <clears throat> but I have to tell you that in the 43 years I've been here, well, our water service lines are continuous copper. They're not like the old days. We're not like Lake County where they have plastic lines. Um, and I have not seen a copper line <coughs> break in 43 years. I've seen a few split because they froze, but certainly not just break. So um, I'm not telling you not to get the insurance, but it's a... Uh, a needless expense. I'm just letting you know. If anybody has questions, they can call your department. Feel free to call my office at uh, 279 6900 and ask for me. Thank you. Okay. Consent agenda? All items listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the village board and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a board member or citizen so requests, in which event the item will be re removed from the general order of business and considered after all other agenda items. Questions? Motion? So moved. Motion by Trustee Brady, second by <laughs> Trustee Lang. Roll call. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. President Urgers? Yes. Old business, 12A? Um, I got it. Um, ordinance amending Title IX. Oh, we have to open. Oh. We have to table. Entertain a motion to untable it. So, so move. move. Okay. Motion by Trustee here, second by Trustee Hine. Roll call. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. President Juris? Yes. Ordinance amending Title 19 zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code, docket number 2013-11. Thank you. Director Janik? Thank you, President Argeris. Um This is a uh, changes to Title 19 that was discussed by the board the last uh, board meeting. Um, these were changes that were reviewed by the Planning Commission several times and recommended for approval. Thank you. Questions from the board? So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Brady, second by Trustee Vogel. Roll call. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. President Argeris? Yes. Thank you. 13A. Um, resolution? <clears throat> Excuse me. Authorizing the village president to execute a grant agreement regarding congreg congregate meals at the Wheeling Pavilion Senior Center. Thank you. Sherry? Thank you, President Argyris. Um, the Department of Human Services is requesting the acceptance of the federal fiscal year 2014 grant from Age Options for the continuation of the Wheeling Pavilion Senior Center um, Congregate Dining Program Lunch at Pavilion. Um, this is gr uh, year three of a three-year grant, um, and the grant amount has increased from um, previous uh, it's, it was at 17694 and it has increased to $21,657, um, and our goal has increased from 3,000 meals to 4,451 this year. Wow, thank you. Questions from the board? 
Motion by Trustee Hine. Second. Second by Trustee Kruger. <laughs> Roll call. Trustee here. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. President Juris. Yes. 13. B. B. Ordinance granting a special use site plan and appearance approval to establish a sit down restaurant with entertainment at 723 North Milwaukee Avenue, docket number 2013 2. Thank you. Director Janik. Thank you. Uh, this docket uh, concerns a restaurant that's proposed to uh, be located at the um, commercial um, building uh, located at the Weston Hotel property. Uh, this property is not owned by the Weston, it's owned separately. Um, currently, the, the building um, is uh, approximately one third full. Um, the location for the restaurant would be right at the corner. Um, the, right, right there at the corner of the, of the building uh, facing the intersection. Um, the uh, liquor license for this um, use was approved earlier this evening. Questions from the board? Trustee Lang? Did the uh, petitioners take off? Is he here? Unfortunately, I believe that the petitioner um, thought he was um, approved after he was approved for his liquor license and then he left, um, unfortunately. Well, I just wanted to ex him to explain a little. The concept has changed since we saw it last and just wanted to get his own words on what's different with it. But, uh, I mean, I'm okay with it. I just wanted to... Basically, what's it. changed is that uh, when, when the board um, heard this in concept, the um, there wasn't going to be a full kitchen. They were going to have a, uh, a, a carry-in or deliver-in food concept. Um, after the board meeting, the uh, petition, petitioner decided to um, to not go that direction. Instead, um, he'll be installing a full kitchen at this location. They will not be carry in. They'll be producing their own food here. Good. And they're taking up um, everything but the end stores on the. They're taking up the the the, the corner as well as two small spaces um, to the east and to the north of that of the corner location. It's approximately 5,000 square feet. So what retail space would be left? There'll be retail space to the north, approximately um, 5,000 square feet to the north, and I believe there'll be two um, relatively small um, uh, locations to the east toward the hotel. Okay. So move. Second. Okay, motion by Trustee Lang, second by Trustee Vogel. Just for the record, want to read the seven conditions so we're clear on that? Yeah, that was, um, I forgot to mention that. Um, on your iPads, um, there, was, there was a mistake made. I delivered a hard copy of the ordinance to you um, with, the correct, um, with the correct conditions. Just want to seven, read them there? The Real seven quick. conditions are that the overhead door system shall be modified as needed to meet code requirements for separating food preparation areas from the outdoors, that the petitioner work with staff to, to locate code compliant bike racks to accommodate four bicycles, live entertainment will be limited to one to four performers, maximum four, hours of operation are subject to liquor, liquor code regulations, location design of the fire pit which is proposed is subject to, to um, village code, 15 feet from the entrance at least. At the patio elevations updated to remove the wood cap on the railing and allow for planter boxes. And number seven, that the accent lighting within the patio area is allowable subject to permit review. Okay, thank you. Motion by Trustee Lang, second by Trustee Vogel. Roll call. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. President Juris? Yes. 13C, two ordinances. Uh, granting a variation and approval regarding 1081 Lake Cook Road. I'm going to read both ordinances. Sure. Um, C1 is ordinance granting a variation from Title 19 zoning of the Wheeling Municipal Code to reduce the required amount of parking at 1081 Lake Cook Road, docket number 2013-18A. And ordinance two is uh, granting a special use site plan and appearance approval to establish a sit-down restaurant with entertainment at 1081 Lake Cook Road, docket number 2013 Dash 18B. Thank you. Director Janik. Thank you. Um, this use as, um, has been discussed by a couple of residents earlier this evening. Uh, this is very similar, almost exactly um, the same as two other locations that have been proposed and approved by the board for, for um, the village. Um, it's a, a restaurant use that requires a special use. 
and there's also an entertainment involved in this use, uh, which is the video gaming. Uh, the site is uh, approximately 2,500 square feet, the very west end of the existing commercial structure, and a parking variation is associated with this use. 42 seats are, are proposed to be within the building. Mr. Left, questions from the board? I'm sorry, Trustee Lane? Yeah. Hi. Good evening. So, so we've heard some concerns from some residents tonight about um, um, lo the, your location here. Yes. Uh, and given the fact that there's some new construction on that corner, hopefully eventually taking place, um, it may cause some traffic issues in that location. Uh, can you address that as to how this your location would not impact um, the the parking? Yeah, I think we're a relatively light user of parking for 2,500 square feet. Uh, we, you know, this is what well, sit down. We don't anticipate, it's 21 and over. We do not anticipate big crowds or large crowds to come here and only dine. This is a place to relax. Uh, you know, we, we, we have... Uh, a full menu, a cafe-like menu of sort of light bites and offerings, but we anticipate people coming here to grab a light bite, maybe a coffee, a glass of beer or wine. We have iPads uh, that people can use for social gaming out front uh, or to read the news, or for those people that do like to do real gaming, uh, we have a gaming area here in the back. We anticipate uh, maybe, you know, 10, 15 people in the establishment at any one time. So uh, we, we do not anticipate heavy, a heavy parking use uh, for this size of establishment. And, and overall, the, uh, um, can you address the types of uh, customers you plan on attracting in this? Who, who would come here and... and I mean, we, we've designed this, and I'm trying to see if there's our pictures in here, and they're not. Oops, sorry. Uh, did we? I don't know if we loaded our presentation in here, but we, for those, I think most of you have seen them at this point. Uh, and uh, this is a an upscale cafe. Uh, it's designed not to be a loud bar and restaurant. Uh, in fact, we do not have bar seats. Uh, it's beer and wine only. We anticipate our demographic to be an older demographic skewing females. So I would say 35 to 75, 85 uh, skewing family. It's, we really think of this concept as that place that people want to go for people who are beyond their bar years and they do not want to go to a bar uh, environment, but they want a place they can go that's an adult environment where they can relax and socialize with people, you know, uh, uh, who have similar interests. So we, we, it's more of a cafe set up and environment. Um, we have a full beverage program, coffee program, like I said, light bites, it's beer and wine only. And so we really do not think of this as a younger, sort of more carousing type of audience. And in fact, um, that's exactly the type of people we're trying to avoid uh, attracting to our establishment. Okay. And do you have a designated smoking area outside? Just the, the, the planning commission did ask us uh, to address that. and. Uh, I sent to Andrew earlier today, I don't think we have it up here, but I think we have hard copies for those who'd want to see it. Uh, we would have a designated area uh, right up here or on the other slide, I guess it would be you know, right here, which would be 15 feet from both entrances. Uh, last question. It just uh, or comment, more or less. It's it's uh, you know we haven't we're, we're anticipating you opening your other centers and mm -hmm. and I I know you're coming across a few difficulties not with yourselves and not with us but it's sounds like the state but it just would help to see something already in action and see how um, it stands up to what you say is it's a very light use. It's hard to tell that right now. So right. um, there's still some question about that. And 
I, I think I know I have some questions about it too is is how how is that use really going to be so is there um, but you say it's all well, happening, for, we're so. we're confident but uh, but yeah it's until we're we're open uh, I understand that there's uh, there's question mark on that and other than saying we're highly confident uh, I don't think we can uh, point to anything and we will have locations uh, open as I said we're going to get approved for our, our first few locations by the Illinois Gaming Board uh, we're hopeful at next meeting because we've had several sites inspected they're not in wheeling but they're built and they're ready to go and so within the next two months we will have real use uh, in places uh, like Hoffman Estates uh, Chicago Ridge uh, and Bartlett. Thank you. Just one Steve quick Vogel. question. Uh, there was a comment made at Kinder Care. How far is Kinder Care from this location? Does anybody know? Mr. Jack? I would say it's uh, probably three um, storefronts down. Isn't there anything in the state gaming law that says it's not supposed to be located next to a church or school or the next number of feet? There are churches and schools, not private. Uh, but not private. It's private. That's not kinder care is not considered. Okay, thank you. It's Trustee Hine. It's a school to me. Nothing. Trustee here. I had similar yeah. concerns as uh, Trustee Lang. I mean, we seem to be trying to approve these variances, and nothing's materialized. So, I we've talked before. <laughs> so, you know what my feelings are. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Kruger? Um, yes, thank you. Um, I, I like the concept. I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm completely comfortable with three of those concepts in the same town mm -hmm. um, without having any benchmark to rate anything on. Um, another comment that I have is that not seven to ten minutes ago we just approved uh, changes to our Title 19 zoning and here we have a variance request for parking. Um, with the Starbucks that's there, I, it, it's like Trustee Lang said, it'll be difficult to know what impact will be on the parking at that corner. And mm -hmm. it, it, it sort of overshadows my, my uh, feeling about uh, Light Bite Cafe gaming. Facilities. I, I, I wish I had a diff another one open in town so that we could see what the impact is. Mm -hmm. So that's all I have right now. Thank Understood. You. Thanks. Trustee Brady? Well, the only thing I have to say is, you know, as far as parking goes, Starbucks isn't going to be a problem. 75% of the traffic at Starbucks is going to be drive through. They're just going to go through the lot and out. 25% are going to park and go inside and eat. So. You know, if we're starting, if we're counting Starbucks as a full restaurant, it probably is never going to materialize that way. <coughs> so I don't think parking is such an issue. Thank you. Thank you. A couple of questions I have for parking here. The, the history of that strip center over there, based on what was presented tonight, the uses. There's been almost a parking variation for every business that's gone in there. I believe that there's two existing parking variations existing, there Existing, right but prior there has been. Oh, there, there have been. There, you know, um, the fact is, is that there hasn't been that, that that shopping center for whatever reason does not fill up their park their parking lot. But according to our code, he's required to have 16 parking spaces, right, for 42 seats and two employees. Correct. With a variance of five. So how many people would he have to have less to seat there to not request a variance? Twelve. Twelve. So you have 30 seats. That's correct. With two employees. It wouldn't be an issue. That's correct. It, and we did uh, sp speak with uh, Andrew Jennings about that. Uh, we've, and we actually have a plan here. No, that's not it. <laughs> Basically, the condition would be instead of 42 seats, it'd be 30, and they would figure out how to, how to locate their seats if they if they in fact want to get rid of the variation uh, that's okay we didn't bring it with us but we uh, we have a plan that gets us to 30 seats that we can come back and resubmit we 
thought we brought it with us. Uh, we didn't want to confuse the board with that uh, and resubmit prior to this, uh, but that's something that you know we would consider doing. Well, Trustee Kruger is right. We just did this Title 19, and we're <laughs> getting out of the gate with variations already. So are you requesting that this get tabled and go back to the plan commission with your revised plan? Uh, if, if we're saying it would be much closer to the parking, or if we'd be with, it, with 30 seats, which uh, we're very comfortable with, uh, if we're saying that that takes away the parking variation, uh, and the parking variation is a significant issue, uh, Well, it is, and then the smoking location is another issue that was brought up tonight by the residents as well, and you have a plan for that that the plan right. commission didn't see. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, if we if we think that's a better course of action, uh, we would be happy to do so. Manager Spandulis. I think the board has the ability to do either, either approve as is or send back to the uh, plan commission. I think it just depends on whether the board sees those two items as discussion pieces for the uh, PC's judgment. So, so we'll have, uh, you'll amend it to 30 seats, is that, I, I'm fine with that and I can approve that tonight. You ready to approve it without staff seeing the plan or with the PC seeing the plan? Dangerous. Um, yeah, we probably sh you're right. You should table it. Yeah. So I entertain a motion to table it. To send uh, it back to question, the plan. Go ahead, Trustee Brady. Is, isn't there something uh, that they have to have so many seats in a restaurant? It's 30 seats. 30? Yeah. So we, we talked to Andrew about that yeah. today. And I believe it's a minimum of 30 seats. Um, what would the parking requirement then be? Uh, 12 Five less. 12. That's what you said, 12, right? I believe that that's correct. That's right. It's a weird sight. Anything else, Trustee Brady? No, thank you. Entertain a motion to table, send it back to the plan commission and staff. Staff meaning the planner and Mr. Janik. So moved. Motion by Trustee Lang, second by? Second. Second by Trustee Kruger. And that's both ordinances, correct? President that's correct. Rogers. Thank you. Roll call. Trustee here? No. Trustee Vogel? No. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? No. President Jurors? Yes. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 1310. 13D? D, I'm sorry. Ordinance granting a special use site plan and appearance approval to establish an outdoor storage for John Deere Landscapes, 658 South Wheeling Road, docket number 2013-21. Mr. Janik? Thank you. Uh, this concerns a, um, a, a large industrial building on um, Wheeling Road, on the, uh, the west side of Wheeling Road. The, um, the situation is that this, uh, this property has an outdoor storage area. It's legal non-conforming. In other words, it did not get approval for the uh, outdoor storage area. It's been there a um, number of years. Um, the proposal is to move the outdoor storage area, which is currently located on the west property line, and to move the outdoor storage area to the south property line so it's closer to the John Deere um, uh, business that's located in the building. Um, to, 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 do, uh, to do that, they need to get a special use approval for um, the storage yard. Um, moving the storage yard uh, is more efficient, both uh, it's more efficient for John Deere and it also um, allows for less uh, vehicle conflicts for vehicles that are going to the existing uh, storage area 
and passing by uh, numerous other units that are in the building. Thank you. Questions? Trustee Huron. Hein. <clears throat> this is a multiple tenant building, isn't it? There's more than... There's numerous tenants in this building. That's correct. Uh, do we know how many are in there approximately? Or I'd say at least 15. Thank you. Anything else? So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Lang, second by Trustee Vogel. Roll call. Yeah, clean up there. Yeah. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Prisoner Juris? Yes. Item 13E has two ordinances. Let's read them both. I mean both at the sure. same time. Uh, terminating the designation of the Wheeling Southeast Industrial Lane in Wheeling Town Center Dundee Road Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project. E1 is ordinance terminating the designation of the Wheeling Southeast Industrial Lane Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area as created by Wheeling Ordinance Number 4353 adopted September 2nd, 2008 as a tax increment financing redevelopment project area and dissolving the Special Wheeling Southeast Industrial Lake Tax Increment Allocation Fund. E2 is ordinance terminating the designation of the Wheeling Town Center Dundee Road Tax Increment Financing Redevelopment Project Area as created by Wheeling Ordinance Number 3812, adopted November 24, 2003, as amended by Ordinance Number 4264, adopted November 12, 2007, as a, ta as a tax increment financing redevelopment project area and dissolving the special Wheeling Town Center Dundee Road Tax Increment Allocation Fund. Thank you. Director Melanti. Thank you, President Arjuris. Um, this ordinance pertains to the village's intent to terminate and dissolve the Southeast TIF District. Uh, the village has engaged uh, Ehlers Incorporated, specifically Maureen Berry, um, to undertake the Southeast 2 TIF District Industrial Lane TIF reset. They're in the process of uh, assisting the village with the development qualifications and adoption of the reestablished Southeast 2 TIF District Industrial Lane following the closure of the current TIF by the statutory deadline of December 31st, 2013. The changes in equalized assessed value, declining real estate values and other factors have led to a deficit in the district and the village will terminate the existing TIF district by the statutory deadline and reset the district to current EAV letter, uh, levels. Staff is recommending the village board approve the attached ordinance to dissolve the Southeast TIF District Special Tax Allocation Fund. Thank you. Questions? You want to answer a couple of the questions that were brought up this evening? Uh, first of all, yes. The, uh, we have engaged a consultant. Maureen Berries with Ellers and Associates, which is assisting village staff and the village in the assessment of the TIF district and its eligibility, including a, um, ho a housing component because we um, we uh, changed and uh, expanded the southeast TIF uh, boundaries um, to eliminate the River Hill River Mills residential subdivision, and the uh, TIF district will be reestablished in 2014. Um, following the Ehlers analysis. Um, certainly, when you look at the changes in EAV and our, our TIF districts, um, with the redevelopment that we plan um, in these TIF districts, some of them have gone from uh, anywhere, if you look at crossroads, from 12 million in equalized assessed value up to 35 million. So when you look at the the potential to what these E EAVs can rise to over time given the redevelopment that's planned. Um, we're confident that this is the proper course of action for the uh, village board. There was a question this evening that was brought up regarding the amount of tax revenue that other taxing bodies, meaning 21 and 214, will receive. Will it lower the amount of property tax revenues that they collect? Maybe there's a question for Mr. Monishing regarding the new lesser assessed valued properties. How are, how are they effective? How does that work? Thank you. Um, 
When, a, when, the, when the village creates a TIF district, the EAVs that are in place at the time are frozen, and that becomes the base EAV. The, tax, the other taxing districts continue to collect the property taxes that they've collected in the past based on that frozen EAV. So I was confused by the question because there's really no loss of revenue to the taxing districts when the TIF district is created. Now, if you want to talk about f future increment, uh, that, you know, as the EAV within the TIF district grows, the property taxes that are generated by that increase in the EAV will be diverted into the TIF fund for economic development purposes. And so there's an argument to be made by the taxing districts that they're not able to tax that new growth. But as far as the EAV that's in place at the time the TIF is created, there's, there's no loss. So I'm not sure what was meant by that. I would also go, go a little bit further and say, at least with respect to the school districts, to the extent that the village provides a, an incentive to a developer that creates a development within a TIF district, we're required to reimburse the school districts for any students that are created by that development. So again, in that sense, I think it would be hard to argue that there's any loss to the, to the school districts. And, and we've been doing that. And we've been doing that. We've, we've, we have a history of doing that in the, um, in the North TIF district where uh, uh, one, one particular student was created by the Prairie Park development. Any other questions from anybody? Yeah, this has always been an argument, especially with the schools. And, and even though it's a 23-year TIF, there's nothing written in stone that we have to keep it for 23 years. No, the, the village can terminate the TIF Anytime. at any time. I don't know if there's any other questions that he had had. I know he had left. John, did you see anything else that <clears throat> should be answered? Here? I think that covered the general uh, issues that Mr. Rosen brought up. Yeah, my, my, I don't know. His one comment really bothered me regarding the industrial lane, the southeast TIF. Uh, there's no residential there. I mean, it's all basically industrial, commercial, the airport, and, uh, you know, the threats of what we knew are our kids and firing teachers and increase class sizes and all this stuff where, I don't know, I, I guess whatever we do is not going to make anybody happy, but. Make a motion we approve. Thanks. I'll second. The first one, right? Yeah, 13 E1. Dave. Second. Dave, yes. second by Ray. Roll call. Trustee here. Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. President Arturis? Yes. 13E2. Entertain a motion. So move. Second. second. Motion by Trustee here. Second by, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the second. Trustee Vogel. Trustee Vogel. Roll call. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. Prisoner Jarris. Yes. I would uh, make a suggestion that uh, Mr. Manashane follow up with Mr. Rosen, in case he didn't hear the explanation. Yeah, we got it. I his think list. that should clarify it for him. We got the list. We will do that. And uh, further, we are drafting a memo to all the taxing bodies to talk about the impact of the TIF and provide some analysis of the impact to them in particular and to the village as a well. whole. Good. Thank you. 13F. Resolution waiving competitive bidding and accepting and approving a proposal from City Construction <laughs> Company for the Dundee Road water main replacement and sidewalk construction project. Thank you. Director Janik. Thank you. Uh, this concerns a, a request um, to waive competitive bidding for a uh, water main project on the, the, the uh, north side Dundee Road, um, some of which is right outside our building here. Um, as the memorandum that you have um, indicates, we've had uh, numerous water main breaks um, in that section of road on an old 8-inch cast iron pipe. Um, breaks on this, on this uh, pipe out here cause uh, traffic uh, tie-ups. Uh, there's a lot of traffic, obviously, in the morning and the evening. And um, the, the, whenever we have to repair it, it is in the roadway. Um, this uh, proposal we have... Uh, involves a company that's currently doing water main work in the village right now. They just completed or are almost complete with a water main project that was publicly bid in the village. We, we propose to use the same company and uh, by doing so it appears that we are going to get a very good price on 
this water main project um, along Dundee Road. I've got some of the details in the memorandum. Um, the proposal is to uh, replace the cast iron 8-inch pipe with a 12-inch plastic pipe. The the cost that we are we are receiving from the contractor that's in town right now, City Construction, um, is a very good price. So um, I know this is not normally done, especially for this large large an amount. But the, the staff believes that we're getting a very good price, uh, in particular because there's no mobilization involved um, with this particular company because they're in town. I've got the, um, the city engineer, village engineer here as well, if you have any questions. Thank you. Questions from the board? One question. Timetable? They would start probably within the next 10 days. Um, they're finishing up on, um, on the north side of Milwaukee Avenue on Edgewood. And I, I believe 10 days? 10 days, yeah. Probably within 10 days. And how long to complete? Because this will really screw up traffic on Dundee Road. Um, that actually, the pipe that we are placing is not going to be in the roadway. We're, so we're going to be placing point. it um, to the north of the roadway. Okay. So we'll be abandoning the existing 8-inch pipe that's in the road. So equipment and trucks are going to be where? On the sidewalk? Uh, they'll park on, on properties uh, to the north. To the north. Yes. Now, also, this uh, this contract also involves um, 550 linear feet of five foot wide concrete sidewalk. So you're telling me that there'll be no lane closures? I'm not telling you there won't be any lane closures. Um, they do have to tie into. Uh, they'll have to tie into various properties. But what I'm telling you is that there'll be. Um, we're looking the pipe outside the roadway. There might be some lane closures at, at, during different periods, but not for a constant period of time while they're putting in the pipe. Okay. So you'd notify the public and do all that other stuff? We will put signage out on the roadways and, and uh, let people know. But I mean, there's no, luckily there's no residents along, you know, like there's a couple, uh, maybe one, that's along this, road, this stretch right here. So there's not that many people to, to uh, let know. We will put signs out the day before we would have any lane closures. Right, because we all just saw this recently right up front of the post office, what, just that brief time that that road was closed down. Traffic right. Headaches. And that's exactly why we want to get the, get the pipe replaced this year so we don't have any problems this winter. Thank you. Trustee Vogel. To piggyback on what Trustee Hines said, um, the workers that come out and do the work, go on, they go ahead and they park in the parkway or on the sidewalk or off the road. But then you get these guys with their flashing lights, the supervisors or whatever, that seem to think they can park in the middle of the road. They turn their lights on, they park there, and hold a conversation. And I see it happen time and time again. Again, all the workers are off the road, like you said, but then they pull up, or an inspector pulls up. Can we also tell those people? Yes, we that will. They should get off the road. There's no that question. Would really help, I There's think. no question. That there'll be a premium at making sure people are not parked on the road unless they absolutely have okay. to be. Thank you. Nothing else. I have one question I, I noticed in here. Maybe we can save some more money regarding the project. Fire hydrants. I, I see a dollar amount here of $5,100 per hydrant. And I've known going through budget, seeing costs, what we've paid for, far less than that, maybe at least $2,000 less than that. Is there any way that we can install our own hydrants to the standards that we're doing right now in the village and the program that Public Works has started in the last... 12 months, 13 months? Uh, it's, it's a good question. And I believe that we will be supplying the hydrants uh, relative to this project. I believe that we do get hydrants probably for a little bit less than $3,000. That's correct. Um, Are we going to be supplying the hydrants? So if we're able to save ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000, good for us. We, we're, we're definitely going to try to supply the hydrants. We have them in. Okay. Well, maybe send us a memo if we can do that. It's not a problem. Okay. Save some money. Good on. point. Thank you for bringing Thanks. it up. Sure, no problem. Anything else? So moved. Motion by Trustee Lang. Second. Second by Trustee Here. Roll call. Trustee Here. Yes. Trustee Vogel. Yes. Trustee Lang. Yes. Trustee Kruger. Yes. Trustee Brady. Yes. Trustee Hine. Yes. Prisoner Juris. Yes. 13G. Oh, sugar. Um, discussion regarding annual repetitive loss analysis report by village engineer John Tack. Thank you. Uh, Director Janet. Thank you. As part of the annual recertification for the CRS program, a report evaluating the progress in implementing the recommendations that were included in the May 2012 
Repetitive loss area analysis must be prepared and submitted to FEMA. This report is required for the village for the village's continuing participation in the CRS program. No board action is required, only discussion to satisfy the CRS program. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Questions from the board? Trustee Hine. Thank you. Um, it says here that um, uh, we have a, a, a class seven rating on this, I believe. That's correct. Okay. And uh, by having that seven rating, uh, People in the, they have to have flood insurance get a 15% reduction on their premium. Is that correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. But I also see that uh, uh, there's a possibility of going as high as 45%. What do we have to do to get closer to that 45%? Well, we actually are going to be applying to, to go to a class six in the near future. There's no guarantee we're going to get it because we've got to jump through some hoops. But to, to get to a class one, I think there's like one in the country. It, it's very difficult to get there. Well, oh, the desert. <laughs> but we can improve it from a 15%. We, we should, if not this year, there will be a point in the near future that we should be able to get to a six. Okay. Um, and how do we determine uh, the uh, the different areas that we have uh, that you've got stated here in your report, uh, like you've got Valley Stream as area one and, and so on and so right. forth on uh, Meadowbrook? Well, the numbering of, of the areas is just at random, but um, FEMA actually provides us with a list of repetitive loss sites. and. Um, they typically are grouped somewhat together. And in, in this particular case, we came up with six different areas through the village that had more, at least one repetitive loss, and obviously some of them had many. OK. Um, at the last meeting we had, we talked about doing some engineering and such over on, on Jackson Drive. Uh, would that area be involved in something like this? Uh, would it be an, an area if, as designated have they had repetitive uh, problems over there? Well, Jackson Drive is, is not actually, uh, I know this is hard to believe, but it's not actually FEMA mapped. Okay. So it's, it's, it, it's not one of the six areas. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Yes, I have a question. Trustee uh, Kruger. Hey, John. Um, question for you, one on uh, Trustee Hines' question about Jackson Drive. Um, would the reason that perhaps, I mean, I understand now you just said that we're not mapped, but um, is it because there's there's no real property, like home loss on Jackson Drive? That, that it might not be that it's considered a repetitive flood area? Yes, we flood all the time, but it doesn't go in homes like it does in Lakeside Villas. Well, the, the, you know, the mapping of a floodplain has a lot of criteria that is involved with it. And sometimes it has to do with the tributary area, and sometimes it has to do with the damage. So as far as why Jackson Drive isn't mapped, I can't say the exact reason. Okay. My other question is, um, piggybacking on Trustee Hine, uh, he asked about reducing our number from a 7 to something else. You said that we're going to try and apply for it to be a 6. What drives the reduction? in that, you know, in that number, what, what would have to happen in Wheeling for us to be a six or a five or a four? Sure, sure. The, the CRS program has what they call activities and uh, the village's participation in these activities generates points. And every 500 points that we generate is 5% reduction in the insurance premium. So right now we're, we're obviously greater than 1500 and actually we're greater than 2,000 is why we're going to be applying for the six level. Can you give me an example of an activity? An example of an activity. Well, just having brochures available at the public library for an outreach program to residents would be considered an activity. Okay, thank you. I, I can give you some more examples. Um, John's kind of downplaying how hard it is to get to these different levels, but for instance, we, we had a uh, we were interviewed by what's called the ISO. It's a uh, agency that that rates municipalities. They're part of the reason why we would or we wouldn't be one of these classes. And um, 
when, when you get, we got interviewed, particularly my department, because we didn't have a, um, a certain number of employees and because we didn't have um, a, a certain um, number or more or less of, of a, say, architects or civil engineers, we, we, would get, we would get actually rated down. We would lose points. It was, it was very interesting. It didn't matter that we had consulting engineers at our beck and call or we had architect, architects to review our plans. If we didn't have them in-house, it was, a, it was, it was a, a reduction in the points that we have. Also, it depends on, on what regulations you also adopt in your municipality. If we, if we went, say, to, you know, right now our code um, requires uh, for compensatory storage, for instance, for properties, 1.5 to 1. If we decided to unilaterally, you know, increase that or increase our regulations to, you know, relative to floodplains or, you know, to uh, for compensatory storage or that sort of thing, we would increase the number of points. So at some point, um, you reduce the viability of your properties, although you're gaining uh, points for the program. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So um, there, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just um, dealing with you know the floodplain and how we deal with residents and you know trying to fix grading. It has to do with a whole uh, raft of other requirements as well. Thank you very much. But by it. reducing that, by reducing those points and getting it down. Everybody in the entire village, not just this particular area, but everybody that has to have flood insurance will would benefit by it. That's correct. There's approximately 850 or so people that have flood insurance. <clears throat> so, if I may, a, a stormwater management program would actually try to give us more points down the road. Probably would. It would. And, and just for your information, I know for a fact that discount is 20 percent now. For a fact, I know that. So you might want to check with your rating. They might have surprised, dropped the rating on you, because flood insurance premiums right now, I believe, as of May of this year, are up to 20 percent, not 15 anymore. I know for a fact I could show it to you. So just FYI, that's why I was kind of surprised when I saw this because I'm surprised to hear that. Go through the bill. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd be happy to show you. But the SRS discount right now is 20 percent, which is a good thing. Might be anticipated. <laughs> Real good. Yeah. I know we had some issues. Maybe they look at those issues as being proactive and gave us that, you know, increase. So we'll look into it. Yeah, we'll look into it. Now, and I'll show you proof. Okay. Okay. Official communication, Trustee Vogel. Uh, nothing. Nothing. Trustee Hine. Nothing this evening. Trustee Kruger? Nothing for me, thank you. Trustee Lang? Across the board. Uh, yeah, a thousand. Spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee here? Nothing, but thank you for asking. Oh, you being asked. <laughs> Trustee Brady? I don't want to break the chain. I've got nothing. <laughs> uh, I know Clerk Simpson has something. Yes, Saturday, October 26th is the Hawaiian Luau, sponsored by the Wheeling Citizens Police Academy alumni. The tickets are $20, and they can be purchased here at the Village Hall. Um, come and see the deputy clerk. Uh, the adults are $20. Kids ages 6 to 12 are $10. Thank you. Can you uh, expand on that a little bit and tell them what the funds are used for? The, you're asking me? Yeah. Uh, uh, Chief Benson, I'll Chief tell you. Benson. Or, uh, yeah, they're used Chief to, Stevens. Yeah, Chief Benson. Regarding the Luau. The Luau. What are the funds being used for? Is it something specific? They're buying all the policemen grass skirts. Spell Luau, will you? Luau, L-U-A-U, I believe it is. But the Luau is going to be held the 26th of October, right here in the back of St. Joseph the Worker at their banquet hall. And the monies that they do garner from that are used to uh, help the police department and things that uh, might not make uh, the budget and uh, or last minute things that come up. They have, boy, they've bought bicycles, uh, shields, um, bulletproof vests. Uh, they've sent officers to training. So it is a great organization, the Citizen Police Academy Alumni Association. And once again, it's the Luau. You can buy tickets, I think. They're being sold through the academy, the uh, Citizen Police Academy members, and it is $20 a person. So 
And it'll, oh, excuse me, can I just add? If you buy them at the door, it's 25. So get them ahead of time. Get them ahead of time. Dinner's at 7 and the show is at 8 o'clock. It's That's the correct. Hokului Academy of Polynesian Arts Dancers. Could you say that again? No. <laughs> <laughs> they can get them from any of the, anybody that's in the police academy or up from the deputy clerk here at the office at the village hall. Second floor. Okay. That's Second correct. floor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you Manager yeah. Schwendels? Nothing this evening. Thank you. Okay. I just got a couple of things. Uh, <clears throat> the Phyllis Harmon path dedication of the bicycle and pedestrian pathway currently, that was currently under construction, which is finished, thank God, <laughs> on Dundee Road will be, uh, recognizing Phyllis Harmon, a former Wheeling resident, founder of the Wheeling Wheelmen, and the oldest living member of the United States Cycling Hall of Fame. is scheduled for this Friday, October 11th at 10.30, and will be held at the Potawatomi Woods Picnic Shelter just north of Dundee Road and east of Milwaukee Avenue. So if you're out and about, and Miss Harmon will be there. Unfortunately, she had a little mishap, but she will be there in a wheelchair, unfortunately, and she will be there to join us. So looking forward to that. Uh, another thing here, mark your calendars for November 9th, Saturday, 8 o'clock, here at Village Hall. We will have our special budget workshop meeting. It is an open meeting. All are invited. And uh, just to make note, our next regular meeting here in workshop meeting will be on October 28th, which is two weeks from the night. And so for two weeks, we won't have a meeting here, so you all know that's what's going on there. So with that, I'll ask for a motion to approve the bills for September 12th through October 2nd, 2013. So move. Motion second. by Trustee here, second by Trustee Kruger. Roll call. One, two, three, four. Um, Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? <clears throat> President Juris? Yes. <clears throat> entertain a motion to recess into executive session for review and approval of minutes of executive session lawfully closed under the Open Meetings Act and pending probable and or imminent litigation. So move. Motion by Trustee Hine. Second. Second by Trustee Lang. Roll call, please. Trustee here? Yes. Trustee Vogel? Yes. Trustee Lang? Yes. Trustee Kruger? Yes. Trustee Brady? Yes. Trustee Hine? Yes. President Juris? Yes. We're going to executive session at 8.10. Good evening, everyone.